I appreciate you for hanging out with us this morning. I'm really looking forward to this interview, especially with news that's not just happening with your company, but also in your space as well. But before we get into all of that, for the folks that may not be familiar with your company, if you could explain it to me like I'm five, what is it that your company does? Sure. In a nutshell, uh, iPoint is a pure play pipeline biotech company based in Watertown, Massachusetts. We develop sustained release medications to treat serious eye diseases, in particular, back of the eye diseases, diseases like wet macular degeneration, diabetic retinopathy, diabetic macular edema. I, the eyes, you know, the eye is something that is so crucial in not just our daily lives. It doesn't exactly, I don't know if I'd call it a disease. I don't know what the medical term is, but my father just had to get cataract surgery. So right. that was kind of like strenuous for me as a, as a son. It's like, oh my God, what's going to happen? You think worst case scenario. So this is definitely interesting to me in terms of what we're going to go ahead and talk about. The biggest thing for me was we saw the FDA that declined Regeneron high dose, yeah. right? Yeah. And then it was, it was supposed to be such a big milestone. I, I believe Wall Street kind of expected for this to go ahead and get the approval. But right now, it seems like the whole industry is kind of going through a consolidation, if you will, right? And in my opinion, you've got iPoint that is definitely a you know, disruptor in that space as well, especially with your EYPT1901. But what does that exactly mean? What is EYPT1901? Yeah, so uh, as you talked about uh, uh, Regeneron and ILEA, you know, these are anti-VEGFs. Uh, VEGF is a protein that mediates disease in the back of the eye, and these drugs are injected in the office, in a retina specialist's office, monthly or every other month to control these diseases. These are huge market, about $10 billion right now in growing in the United States every year. It's a huge market because uh, people are getting older, they're living longer, so there are more people out there with these diseases. So these injections like Vibismo and, and ILEA, they work really well and they're safe. The big problem is they don't work very long. So basically you develop wet macular degeneration and you're signing up for monthly or bi-monthly injections with your retina specialist for the rest of your life. What we're trying to do is make it better for people. Our drug, EYP1901, we believe should last between six months and nine months in the eye with a single injection. And we're developing it as what we refer to as maintenance therapy, meaning don't throw away your ILEA or your high dose ILEA should it get approved. Go ahead, doctors, treat initially with those drugs. Get the patient as good as you can get them and then turn them over to us. And we believe we can take about 50% or more of wet macular degeneration patients and be able to get them to be treated every six months or longer safely and effectively. Gotcha. So, you know, yesterday, whenever I did an interview with another company, we kind of talked about, hey, you can either stop the problem, keep it from getting worse, or just making sure that it never happens in the first place. If I understand correctly, you're trying to make sure that, hey, we can contain it from it getting worse. Is that correct? Correct. And that's essentially what all these anti-VEGFs do. They are not yeah. cures, but yeah. they control the bleeding and the fluid leakage that comes from wet macular degeneration or diabetic macular edema. We're just trying to make it better. And are you competing with the high dose ILEA or is it more like, hey, go ahead and take care of that, kind of like what you just said, and then you can go ahead and bring us in and kind of like a one-two punch. Is that is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, I think that's more of how it will be used. I think the, the thing about uh, ophthalmologists who treat these diseases is we like to individualize therapy. We like to treat the patient in front of us. So if you open a patient who can safely come in every six months for a shot, it's nice to give them that option. There might be patients who even with our drugs still require more frequent injections, in which case they may alternate with a high dose ILEA and an EYP1901. I believe you've also got a couple of um, things in phase two trials at the moment as we well. Do. One of them that's expected to come out top line, yeah. I believe in Q4 of this year. Can you tell us a little bit about those two? Exactly right. So EYP1901 is our big pipeline drug. Right. Uh, it is a combination of a small molecule that's called virolinib. And we put it into what we call Duracert, which is our patented delivery system. Injected into the eye in the eye doctor's office, just like ILEA is. Uh, and it is in a phase two trial right now for wet macular degeneration. The trial is fully enrolled, 160 patients, two doses of our drug against an ILEA control. And we're going to have the top line results in the fourth quarter of this year. 
Got it. And now for the, uh, you have another drug, I believe, uh, that you're expecting some top line results in quarter two of 2024. Any yeah. insight on that one? Yep. Yeah. Same drug, EYP1901, okay. different indication, non proliferative right. diabetic retinopathy. So in the United States, you know, 30, 40 million people have diabetes. About a third of them will develop this problem. And most of the time, right now, eye doctors are just watching it. They're actually, Lucentis and ILEA are both approved to treat it, but very few patients are getting those treatments because they're so frequent. They need to be done initially monthly and then every quarter after that. It's very hard for these patients who are working to come in for all these injections. So we hope to get a label for EYP-1901 and non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy for every nine months or longer. And we believe that convenience to the doctors and the patients will yeah. give us a big market share. So the phase two trial, that top line data is coming out in Q4 of next year. Got it. Appreciate the insight. Q2 of next Q2 year. Q2 of right. next year. Yeah. Now, the results that you have, I just want to kind of differentiate because you've got a couple of results coming out, right? One of them is at the end of this year, so Q4, mm -hmm. and the other Correct. one is Q2 of next year. Correct. If for some reason, God forbid, the results of this quarter that you're going to, the Q4 that you're going to report, if it's not what you expect, is that going to negatively impact next year's results or are they kind of parallel in terms of studies? You know, it's a good question. Uh, and, and I have to answer the question with a caveat. It depends why it's not what we expect. Very fair. Yeah. So again, from a safety perspective, varolinib is shown to be very safe in the human eye and animal studies and all the rest. You know, our inserts, Duracert, have been FDA approved in four products already. 80,000 yeah. patients worldwide have received them. So we don't think there's going to be a safety issue. But of course, that's why you do these studies. Yeah. And if it's something that we believe through design of a future study or a little tweak of the insert we can get around, we don't think there will be any long-term negative uh, impact to that. But they are different diseases, and it's certainly conceivable that it may work better in one disease than another. All right. Appreciate the insight on that. Now, obviously, none of this is cheap, right? It requires quite a bit of money in terms of R&D implementation. Got to pay the folks that are working for you as well. I know you sold one of your franchises for approximately $82 million. Does this sale kind of help pay off the bank debt or any type of debt that you've got and help put yeah. money in the balance sheet? Like, What are we looking at in terms of the financial health of the company to achieve the success that you're looking for? Again, great question. So, So it's hard to run a biotech company developing drugs while having one commercial product. You need, you know, the whole commercial force, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And while the, the drug we sold off called Utique, it's a great drug, uh, and our partner Alamera is gonna do a great job with it. It was mildly profitable for us, but we were able to monetize it to over $80 million over the next two years. And what that did is it cleared our balance sheet of all debt, so we're debt free, uh, gave us two more quarters of uh, runway, uh, burn nice. rate. So we actually, right now with no other financing, we've got uh, money to last us into 2025. And wow. that's over a year after data. So we're in a really good balance sheet position as a result of that. And now we're a pure play biotech company with a pipeline and a and, uh, readout coming in about five months. So we, we think we're in a very, very strong position right now. Now, you mentioned, you know, you have run rate or burn rate till about 2025, which is great to hear, especially, you know, assuming you get uh, great data coming out, more companies will be in, you know interested in investing, things like that, yeah. government grants and things like that as well. So two questions. One, I'll start off with, does the government help subsidize any of this in terms of research or is there help, any help that comes on that part? And if not, how are you kind of gauging yeah. that, hey, in the future, we can make this not as expensive for the average American to go ahead and utilize? That's one of the things, right? Hey, there's a solution for you to help you and your loved ones, but it might cost you an arm and a leg. Well, so first of all, from the government perspective, early on, there are government grants for companies. But once you're at this clinical stage, the grant's really just not big enough to really cover the cost that you need. So, so you need to raise money either through a partner uh, the royalty sales, you know, there are all kinds of ways that we're looking at now to help fund those. But the, the other question is, what's the value to the greater world? You know, obviously to a patient who has to come in six times a year for a shot, now only has to come in twice a year, that's obvious value. But yes. you've got to be able to price your products so that the government insurance companies see the value as well. And that would be our intent. Uh, yeah. You know, there's all kinds of uh, economic valuations you can do based on uh, you know, simple things like how many visits do you save? How many tests do you save? Uh, but, you know, there may be additional value there too. It's conceivable that our drug 
has benefits beyond the anti-VEGFs that are out there. We have some data that we may have something called neuroprotection, which means we protect the retina from dying. And if we have that, then that's an advantage that will be worth a premium over what's out there now. Yeah, and especially I'm glad you're also looking at the fact that, hey, Americans have to take time off of work, use their PTOs, try to take, you know, unpaid time leave to Absolutely. go ahead and come in and get these injections. And then also, I don't know, but how long it may take to recover from the injections. Uh, you know, like I said, my, when my father got his cataracts, he was kind of out of commission for a couple of weeks to make sure things were a okay. Uh, we've talked about so much. We talked about the past, the present, the future, especially things to look forward to in the top line data of Q2 of 2024, but also Q4 of this year. Is there anything else in terms of catalysts that our viewers and potential investors should kind of know about in terms of what's coming ahead? Yeah, sure. Well, you know, we have this platform, DuraCert, and it is able to safely deliver molecules to the back of the eye, which is a very sensitive area, uh, for weeks, months, or even years. And so we have other molecules that we're evaluating. In particular, uh, your audience may be aware there is recently the FDA approved a new drug for dry macular degeneration, uh, but it needs to be injected every month or two. We'd yeah. like to see if we could do a little bit better and put a, a molecule that does has the same mechanism of action, but can last three months or longer. So we're working on that. We have a partner, Rally Bio, who is providing us with the molecule. Got it. Appreciate you so much, Jay, for coming on the show. But before I let you go, though, I wanted to at least give the floor to you in case there was anything else that we missed out on, any questions I didn't ask you that you wanted to address to our viewers. The floor is yours. You know, your, your questions were excellent. I would just like to say that, you know, I, I've been at iPoint full time for a year and a half, part time before that. Uh, we've got a great track record of execution. We dosed our first patient in the phase one trial in January of 2021. And yeah. we're going to have top line results from a phase two trial in December of 2023. So we are on a roll and uh, we expect to continue it. And if with good top line data, we want to start two phase three pivotal trials in 2024 and get this drug approved as quickly as we can. Well, hey, I look forward to our conversation here in six months or less when you report one of the top line results in Q4 of this year. That is Jay Duker, who is the president and COO of iPoint Pharmaceuticals, ticker on NASDAQ is EYPT. Jay, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It was great. Absolutely. You take care. And I do definitely want to go ahead and see how this company goes ahead and does its terms of top line results and different things like that. So make sure y'all follow along as well. And as always, do your own due diligence. We like to get these questions answered directly from the executives, but obviously go ahead and do your own research and see if it's worth your hard earned money and investing in them. But we appreciate you for joining us today for the interview and we will see you next time.